Okay, good morning. Today I'm super late. But yeah, we are busy. Um, that was... I'm not sure if I want to say it was exciting yesterday. That was actually not so... Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I was a little bit missing. Uh, the attention of the, the Sunday was definitely missing. But uh, there were some interesting results. I actually saw most of the second half of Georgia against Kazakhstan where yes Georgia was clearly the better team uh, got two goals I think the second one was actually quite a nice shot um, was more most notable for me I still did not get to make or finish the jersey review videos and now uh, in my top 10 video um, I literally don't have the time I want to do it, but I literally don't have the time at the moment um, because things at work are again heating up a little bit and at home we're having, yeah, we're getting to the point where everyone is getting sick so, you know, there is not much time and I'm watching games because I want to do these videos which keep me at least entertained while driving uh, but also I think keep, keep us all up to date stand so yeah um, Georgia against Kazakhstan the most notable thing I said before uh, uh, probably the jerseys uh, except for the nice second goal for Georgia I really like that both teams have Adidas jerseys that are not a template uh, Georgia has this white with some stripes that are actually printed on in black and white I wonder I mean they played with red pants which makes a lot of sense sorry I'm just the camera just slightly which makes a lot of sense but then with red pants I, I, I feel it would look better if this was instead of black there was some red just the way I feel it would be better and the Kazakhstan away jersey was a weird one I like the light blue because that's the one from the flag, but then the dark blue pinstripes and the dark blue sleeves and only yellow accents, that was weird. That was hella weird. Um, yeah, 2-0 at that point I didn't pay attention any anymore and I just saw this morning that in uh, stoppage time I think Kazakhstan made a sort of goal and made it 2-1. Uh, same group Andorra against Latvia 0-0 uh, and that actually is now the Latvia and Andorra finish level of points for me. Latvia, but that's again, it was from the 90s. I'm somewhere stuck there. It's very amazing how um, you, if you don't follow uh, closely and remind yourself constantly what's the packing order, it's really weird of how you judge teams. Uh, I see it from you, for instance, Poland at the moment to me is a top European team. Uh, just about on the face of it, but for me Poland is still somewhere stuck in pot 3 or 4. I, if Austria would play Poland, I generally would think, yeah, Austria should beat them. So, uh, no, at the moment absolutely not, but uh, it's always in the back of my mind. For me, Latvia is the strongest of the Baltic uh, countries. No, they're not. They're actually quite bad at the moment, so sorry about that. So they finish level on points. Uh, Georgia wins this group with 10 points ahead of everyone else. That's that's the big W. Then uh, the next uh, League D group uh, we have Fyram, Northern Macedonia, Macedonia, uh, however you want to call them, uh, beating Gibraltar 4 0 and thus securing their spot on the top, securing promotion. And uh, it wouldn't have mattered much anyway because Armenia only managed a 2 2 draw in Liechtenstein. I think they had a lead, uh, then Liechtenstein turned around with a goal before, right before and right after the half and then um, late Armenia made it 2-2. So yeah, there's not much, uh, was not much there happening to fire on, I guess this is the most politically correct name, is through. Uh, and we'll see where they go from here. League C was also kind of a disappointment. Uh, yesterday we said that Cyprus needs to get something, but yeah, I honestly didn't see the highlights. Which I just saw how the results developed, and Norway got uh, one 2 nil. 
which would have meant that Bulgaria needs to win against Slovenia by a lot uh, to make up for goal differential, at least two goals more, if not three, even because uh, Novak uh, has already scored more goals. But um, don't tell me I'll down on that one now. But yeah, so 2-0 for um, Norway in Cyprus. So Cyprus actually looks a little bit um, that they might go down to League D. Uh, Albania, at the moment Albania is safe. Let's put it that way. So with the one win that they have over Israel, Albania looks safe. And we have uh, probably Cyprus falling into League D. And then Bulgaria against Slovenia ended 1-1. Bulgaria took the lead, um, but didn't do much more. And again, I didn't see any highlights from that game. Uh, the one thing I can tell is that I'm super disappointed that the stadium was again empty. You should not play Nations League games in, the, uh, in your biggest stadium. Yes, it's a national stadium, blah, blah, blah. You feel this against France or against uh, Germany, but you don't feel the stadium. Um, against Slovenia and at the moment I think there's so much disappointment I know that there's disappointment from uh, the Bulgarian side that even this young squad who actually was performing quite well I mean they got three wins to start and now only two points well this is a little bit disappointing I grant that but still uh, they had a chance of progressing and they are probably the best uh, second place team although it doesn't buy them much you would have to win the group and I think they would have been in uh, the third spot or something like that. Uh, I don't have the seating in mind. I, the only thing I had in mind is that Austria needs to be uh, to be in the second pot. Austria needed to um, be in second place, which they did. And so third place like that, then four. I just make a head cal calculation. Probably not, it was not even in there for uh, Bulgaria to really make it to the third spot, so Bulgaria will be uh, put 14. Which leads us to League B. Uh, let's go to the third first 0 0 between Denmark and Ireland uh, in a game that didn't matter at all. Um, we have now Denmark 8 will 6, uh, Ireland 2, and let me just go to the result for the League C 3. Uh, Norway 13, Bulgaria 11, Cyprus 5, and Slovenia 3. So, yeah, it's, uh, that's where it stands. Slovenia goes down, and Cyprus will probably go down too. Uh, that Bulgaria got quite some points is, and is a good sign, but I think more was in there. But I think the poor showing in Norway kind of made a uh, show of me that Norway is the best team. And you know, I like Norway too, I just have more for my family. Okay, uh, then the two games that actually really mattered yesterday, there was first of all uh, the Czechs against the Slovaks, uh, where Slovakia needed a win, everything else uh, will not do. And they started out well, um, I saw most of the second half of that game. Uh, they started out well, but as soon as Schick made a run, third half, was a run, mid -half, second, uh, first half, made the goal and it was a wonderful goal. It was a counter-attack, he is free on goal and then he lobs it over the keeper. Really nicely done, really nice done. I mean the ball had a bounce but he really did it well. Make it 1-0. And it's kind of funny because uh, this Czech team, I don't know too many players from there. The Czechs are a little bit uh, fallen off my radar. I always think the Slovaks have, you know, they have Hamšík, they have uh, so, I mean, the players that you know, but um, seemingly uh, this generation, this golden generation uh, of the Slovaks is at its very end. And uh, it was showing us that the Czechs, once they had the lead, yes, it's easier for them to play, but the Slovaks never got anything dangerous going. Uh, it was always the Czechs that were more uh, dangerous. Probably could have made a tunnel even before half time in the second half. The game became really dull because the Czechs uh, limited themselves to just sitting back and not giving much chance to the Slovaks. The Slovaks tried, but uh, there was no coherence in their attack. I think the only thing was in the 85th when Duda 
had a nice, that, that was a nice passing move and if Duda would have made the goal there would have been a little bit uh, going but there really wasn't much going on. So uh, the Czechs beat their neighbors twice and stay in League B, the Slovaks have to go down to League C uh, and I'm curious to see where this will go. Um, To me, both teams are League B teams. I again say uh, there should be a further playoff uh, to determine it. Just putting four down and four up is a little bit too radical to my liking. I can see two things that um, you have each League B or each last finishing team a play a team finishing first. Higher rank the B team having home and field advantage. I think in that case you would have to have a home and other way. Or um, you rank, you say, okay, those four that are finishing bottom are now candidates for uh, relegation. And they uh, play. Again, you could make it home or away, or you make it that you know, only have one game. Have the best fourth place team play the worst first place team and second two and three and give uh, home field advantage to one and two. I think that that could work actually quite well and yeah, it's so complicated with the filling up thing uh, for the Euros. Uh, there, I think they shot themselves a little bit of foot because that would be the place to do it. But okay, uh, it's not perfect and we have to feel it out. I personally feel that 4 down, 4 up is a little bit too radical. I gotta be honest. But, so, but yeah, I mean, as I said, we have Germany going down in League B. It's the same as Slo for the Slovaks, it's not a, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, you, we have Ireland going down. It's a little bit funny the teams that are promoted. I mean, um, I would say Norway and Finland, although they did great in their respective groups. Uh, are not necessary teams that I would think should be in uh, League B. And same goes a lot actually for Scotland and Israel, whoever makes it out of there. Uh, although Scotland probably has the name, so it would be nice to see them. I would love to see Scotland uh, challenge for a spot at the Euros again. I think Scotland is a team that should be in such a tournament. And last time around all the home nations qualified, plus Ireland, only Scotland was uh, missing out. Yes, it is. But that leaves us with the big game, which is such a classic game between uh, Germany and the Netherlands. And for the first time in a long time, you would have given the advantage a little bit to, to all the Netherlands. First off, let me say, um, if you have seen the game ahead of the, it was played in Gelsenkirchen, and you saw the players' tunnel, which looked like um, a tunnel. Which I actually love because I mean this is a mining region, and so uh, giving this feel to, to the stadium, although it looks a little bit uh, scary in a way, uh, I actually like I actually like it. So to remind you, you know, this is a working class area. The Netherlands might have seemingly had the advantage, but I always had the feeling that this is a game that Germany really wants to win and they actually needed to win it to make sure that they will be in pot 1 and not in pot 2 uh, because the third and fourth uh, third place team of League A so the worst ranked ones, the two worst ranked ones will actually uh, go in the second pot and um, so Germany I think it was more important for Germany, to be honest, uh, to make a really good goal showing and to finish the game on a high note. And they really played well uh, from, uh, from the beginning. You know, you could see that the Dutch are maybe trying a little bit, but um, they were a little bit stretched. I think the win against uh, the Netherlands took more out of them than you would think. And Germany is a good squad and they are hungry squad. I think in the net qualification process, Germany will be a dangerous team again. Because now they have this, uh, they have something to prove, and that is always dangerous uh, for Germany. They, so I don't count them out quite yet. 
Werner, Timo Werner got a very early goal, 1-0. Um, I wondered about the defending, it was very lax. And from that on, the Dutch tried to do a little bit, but they really couldn't do much. It was all Germany and Sané. I, I think there were chances even before, but when Sané was, took a deflection, but still I made it 2-0. Goalkeeper didn't look that great, but you know, all of them were kind of sloppy defending mistakes. And then it was all Germany. Germany could have made it 3-0 um, with Gnabry, I think. Uh, but didn't, and at halftime, yeah, stupid me. In a way, I thought, okay, that that game is not that exciting any, any, any anymore. And I looked at the result, uh, at the halftime results, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna watch now the Czechs play the Slovaks because that's one nil. There's still something uh, possible there. But I kept my computer on to monitor the other results to not get as uh, blindsided as yesterday. But then, yeah, um, yeah, it was not really much coming from the Dutch. It was again the Germans who should have made the third goal. Germany dominated them. Then in the 85th, yes, it was a nice passing move in a way. Uh, it looked at first a little bit sloppy, but then uh, there were three or four clearing passes and promise from a distance. Makes a really nice shot and makes it 2-1. Um, I didn't see it live, but I quickly rewound. And I switched to that game because I saw that the Slovaks are not going to do anything uh, when uh, Duda missed the one chance in the 85th. I thought, yeah, that's not going to happen. Then I saw it's two one for uh, only two one for Germany. And then the Dutch and I'm more was anyway more in the game. Then I thought, okay, there might be a chance and we might see some excitement. Uh, and the funny thing is when I watched that. I came back again, it was the Germans in front of the Dutch goal, but you could see that, yeah, maybe there is now something happening for the Netherlands, and there was something happening in the 90th minute. And as a Dutch fan, I'm wearing orange today, yes, it's the Philadelphia Flyers, because I'm wearing now long sleeves, and I didn't really feel comfy of going with a Dutch jersey. Their performance this time was not good. This was probably the worst performance in the entire nation's league. And it has to be said, over both games, in both games, Germany was actually the better team. It had, honestly. Uh, the result in Amsterdam was a freak result, where the, where the run of play really favored the Dutch, and you know, they got two, uh, they got two late goals, and now they again got two late goals. Van Dijk, as an attacker, uh, the, I think the ball came off a German defender, it was across the ball came off a German uh, defender and he just wanted it into the net, I mean, like a striker and Van Dijk is clearly the best player on that team. Uh, he's a rock in defense and he is dangerous uh, going forward. Uh, great player to have, gotta say. And so it's 2-2 and the Dutch win the group. Um, I honestly feel some vindication there. Just for the fact that I really felt that uh, uh, the French only played half-hearted. Not like the Spanish who were, were stellar at first and then absolutely sloppy. And I don't know what happened. But the French, the two games that I saw, well, the two away games, they were absolutely sloppy and not motivated, seemingly. Uh, when they played against the Dutch at home, there was some motivation there because it was the first home game, first competitive home game after, and first game in Paris after the World Cup. So yeah, there were big celebrations there, and you know, you wanna show, and they showed a little bit. Against Germany, probably they showed also a little bit. So you know, at home the French played okay, all, all, all right, but away from home, and especially this performance against the Netherlands um, on Saturday, or was it Friday? Friday, was it Friday? That was rather disappointing, I gotta be said. So yeah, I th and the Dutch played well, twice well against France. I gotta give it to them and had a little bit luck against Germany. And that group was, a, was more in the balance than it might think. I think Germany was not that far off because they were the better team against France. They had a, I don't wanna say a decent showing, but you know, they were not the, the better, the, the worst team against the 
Dutch in Amsterdam, they just got, um, it was just that at the end it didn't work out nicely for them. And France was lackluster. So yeah, I'm personally I'm happy that the Dutch won it. I think this was it. If I look now at the final four, of course I have to say um, it's a bit of a mixed bag because there's only one team in there that I would say is really top top, uh, which is Portugal. But you know I'm happy that England, the Dutch, and, and even Switzerland is in there because it gives it a little bit of different feel. And I think the Nations League is yeah, let the big nations try out a few things and give maybe this one B teams a chance to get a title and maybe for that that's fine my thoughts let me know what you think about nations league and so on uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this keep your fingers crossed that i get to the top 10 videos and so on i really wish so and i will talk to you soon bye